If you're anything like me, you're British, rural, a lowercase g gamer, have a physics degree, and a grade 5 in two types of dance, and one musical instrument. And you found yourself thrown into the deep end of PvP this season on the Sea of Thieves. That, or even more like me, you've been watching from the sidelines, both metaphorically and literally, as fight seems to happen very close to your cargo destination. And you may have thought to yourself, how can I get in on all this action? How can I, as the kids say, get good? Well, the simple and honest answer is just to throw yourself at the hourglass. A bit like this. But, after going 0 and 5 and wasting a few thousand gold on supplies that you're not even using, this can just be a little bit demoralizing. So what else can you do? How could you turn adventure into your own practice mode for PvP? Due to the very nature of fights on the sea, I'm going to be dividing this video in two halves. One about ship fights and one about people fights. They call it team deathmatch, but that feels inappropriate because you're not necessarily in a team. Often you're not because the rest of your crew are sitting there doing nothing. But anyway, let's start with the ships. While these skelly ships are no more than plaques of wood being held together by rusted nails, friendship, and flame hearts wanton destruction for everything and all things that are Sea of Thieves, as a result, they make great target practice for throwing your balls around. And unlike fighting their fleshy counterparts, they can't do half the YouTube that players can. No boarding, no blunder spam, and no being just unnecessarily toxic over the mic. And while they are armed to the teeth with cursed cannibals, they rarely seem to use them. And if they do, they're just another thing you have to get used to when it comes to player ships anyway, so that's part of the training. News just in! It turns out you cannot use chain shots on a skelly ship. It seems the power of skeletal friendship is enough to cause reality to bend around the mast, allowing for the chain shot to pass straight through. Why is this? Has Flameheart developed some sort of anti-chain shot technology? Like the improved version of the sloop? Can we expect to see this armed on Reaper ships going f forward? No, it, it's just rare. They just, just forgot. It's... Rare. Now, one of the fundamental issues with a skeleton ship is they're quite hard to find. Honestly, I think they made quite a good Order of the Souls mission, but that's beside the Yay. point. But hold up! The Skeleton Armada! That's like, always the world event on every server I jump on. Why don't I try that? Well, apart from being by far the worst world event that the game contains, the Skeleton Armada is much more about surviving with your ship for a long period of time than dealing out damage to the skeletons. Normally you only want a couple of holes in the bottom and then someone to board and buy you time, rather than just spamming cannonballs at them, because you're just going to run out, because it's a lot of skeleton. It's a lot of wood you got to make your way through. You may be wondering to yourself, what about ghost ships? Well, while they aren't armed with cursed cannonballs, have predictable movement, and are a lot easier to find, there are an unpiratly amount of them, and they do an unpiratly amount of damage to boot. So maybe ghost ships are better if you're trying to improve your cannon aim, however, I would say a skeleton ship is better if you want to improve both your cannon aim and your ability to actually control the ship. Okay, but what about Team Deathmatch? How are we going to re replicate that attitude of player v player? Well, luckily we don't actually have to. Training modes in a lot of video games don't bother. They're mostly just... How can I put this one way? While the AIs in this game are nothing like real life players with much less movement options and are less likely to leave themselves open to attack, they are still great for target practice. But which AI is the best for this? Well, we can easily rule out things like the sea monsters as they do too much damage to take, and skeletons can be weird and swarm you in groups. <sighs> I hate to say it, but I think the best place to go might be once again to those Spanish forts. Nobody expects the Spanish fortifications. But why do I think the Conquistador's helmets make really great targets? Hold up, does that say something about what my pirate wears? Well, between being easy, easy to access, the range of areas you can fight, and the infinite supply of ammo, and the satisfying ability to one-shot a phantom, this is by far the best way to get some practice in, and still make some bit of money on the side. If you want to get the most out of your training, unbind that right click and practice your fast and furious firing from the hip. As well as try shooting up the ghost with the eye of reach, again, without looking down the sights. Trust me, it's like trying to aim with a plank of wood over your face. Apart from that, there isn't much you can do when it comes to PvP, apart from PvP to get good at PvP. That's, that's a lot of PvP. But PvP is much more fun if you have a group of friends to do it with, and there's two easy ways of fighting people. You can check out a Discord, like mine. <laughs> Or you could try playing on Open Crew, which, you know what, I think, like, Open Crew gets- everyone- no, Oh, for the love of the Pirate Lord, am I going on about Open Crew again? Okay, look, this weekend there's a cool charity fundraising event for special effects that is being run by the Main Sea of Thieves channel, and I'm hopping on board for my own side project on my Twitch channel, you can find all the information in the ch in the top pinned comment, and I hope to see you there, it's gonna be a lot of fun.